Hello, I'm Dr. Owen. I'm a medical doctor and chemist and welcome to this video on Asian Flush, also known as Asian Glow, and for the rest of this video referred to by its other name, Alcohol Flush Reaction. Today I'll address some common misunderstandings and myths surrounding alcohol flush reaction by explaining the following. What is it? What causes it? Why it's more serious than some may think? And lastly, what may have caused this particular genetic mutation to spread throughout Asia, but not the other continents. As always, I'll link the script to the video description below, through which you can find the links to all the scientific research behind this video. Let's begin with what is alcohol flush reaction. Most of us know of this condition by the symptoms experienced by sufferers after even small amounts of alcohol consumption. Those that suffer from alcohol flush reaction tend to develop a warm red flush across the cheeks, hence the name, plus nausea, headache, and a racing heart or palpitations. Next, what causes alcohol flush reaction? One common misconception amongst Western cultures with high alcohol consumption, such as my own in Britain, is that alcohol flush reaction is a result of alcohol naivety and that it can be trained out by enduring and persisting several rounds of unenjoyable alcohol binging or drinking to excess. By addressing the biological and genetic drivers for this condition, will highlight how misinformed and dangerous this viewpoint is. First, the biology of processing or metabolizing alcohol. For all of us, the vast majority, around 92% of the alcohol we consume, is processed by the liver according to this diagram, with small amounts also excreted from the body as alcohol in our breath, sweat and urine. An enzyme called alcohol dehydrogenase, or ADH, breaks alcohol down into a substance called acetaldehyde. And then another enzyme called acetaldehyde dehydrogenase, or ALDH for short, breaks down acetaldehyde into acetate, also known as acetic acid, and more commonly known as vinegar. Acetate is the vinegary part of vinegar, and is a good endpoint because acetate is non-toxic at normal doses, and is a molecule that our body uses for numerous functions, with some people deliberately increasing their consumption of acetate for perceived health benefits, typically by adding a shot of apple cider vinegar to their daily routine. The usual end fate of acetate is that it is broken down into carbon dioxide and water as a byproduct of one of the normal bodily reactions it is involved in. Right, that's how we normally process alcohol. Now, here's what goes awry in alcohol flush reaction. There are actually two similar forms of this ALDH enzyme, labelled ALDH1 and ALDH2 in the literature, with ALDH2 doing most of the heavy lifting when it comes to processing acetaldehyde. Non-sufferers possess both enzymes. Sufferers, by contrast, cannot produce an effective version of ALDH2. This causes a choke point and buildup of acetaldehyde in the body. This is a problem for two reasons. The first of which is that acetaldehyde is classified by the International Agency for Research on Cancer as a carcinogen, which means its presence in the body has been scientifically proven to increase the risk of developing cancer. In this case, cancer of the esophagus or gullet. Plus, it is the substance responsible both for the unpleasant symptoms of drinking in all of us and in those more severe symptoms in those that suffer alcohol flush reaction. Now the genetics. Alcohol flush reaction comes as a result of a genetic mutation coding for an ineffective ALDH2 enzyme that would otherwise convert acetaldehyde into acetate or vinegar. Research estimates that around 30 to 50% of people of Japanese, Korean and Chinese ethnicity have inherited genetic code programming for a much less effective version of ALDH2. No amount of so-called training can alter this fact. Quick side note, whilst the word mutation can sound like a bad thing with possible negative connotations in some situations, in genetics it is the generally agreed upon term used to describe random permanent changes to our DNA structure in the replication process and is used without prejudice or negative connotation. Next, just how bad is alcohol flush reaction? There are two parts to this question, the cancer risk and the symptom severity. Regarding the risk of esophageal cancer in people with alcohol flush reaction, the US National Institutes for Health 
reported that an alcohol drinker with this genetic mutation is six to ten times more likely to develop esophageal cancer than somebody drinking the same amount of alcohol without the mutation. With the important thing to note being that the most effective way to minimize your risk is to reduce your alcohol consumption, regardless of whether or not you have the genes for the less effective ALDH2 enzyme. And what about the severity of the symptoms? How severe the flushing, headaches, nausea and palpitations experienced are depends on several factors, including how much alcohol you've consumed and, again, genetics. Some sufferers of alcohol flush reaction inherit one copy of the ALDH2 gene that produces an ineffective enzyme and one copy of the same gene producing an effective enzyme. Their symptoms will be milder than those that have inherited two copies of the gene, both coding for the ineffective enzyme. In fact, oftentimes people with two copies of the gene coding for the ineffective enzyme will have significantly lower alcohol consumption than societal norms because the symptoms are so severe. An illustrator of this point is the use of a drug called disulfiram, sold under the brand name Antabuse, as a treatment for chronic alcoholism. Its aim is to make the consumption of alcohol utterly intolerable, and it does this by blocking the ALDH enzymes from converting acetaldehyde to acetate. The fact that blocking these enzymes from functioning properly is an effective way of helping chronic alcoholics to abstain from drinking is strong reason to be sympathetic to sufferers of alcohol flush reaction. Okay, the last thing to cover in today's video is this. Why does this condition predominantly affect those of Asian ethnicity? Here, the question is, why did this genetic mutation spread far and wide in Asia without doing so elsewhere in the world? And does this imply that at some point this gene mutation conveyed a survival or reproductive benefit to those that inherited it? The short answer to these questions is that we don't know for sure, but the scientific community does have a couple of interesting theories on why this may have been the case. These are, one, whilst Europeans were fermenting wheat to make relatively weak beer, East Asians were fermenting rice to produce much stronger rice wine, and as this was happening several thousand years before we could accurately test alcohol contents, and before the introduction of recommended alcohol consumption levels, this genetic mutation may have been favourable in East Asia as a way of moderating alcohol consumption that otherwise could have been very dangerous and detrimental. Another idea to have been suggested is that the genetic mutation that causes alcohol flush disorder may have offered protection against a particular infection going around at the time the gene spread through East Asia. The third idea is that the mutation may have either offered or perhaps continues to offer some form of evolutionary benefit that we are not currently aware of. Okay, that's all for today's video. I hope you've enjoyed it and found it informative. If you did, please consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and sharing the video with anybody else who might benefit from the information within. Thank you for watching, 